Hello, everyone. So let's talk about the big fight we are witnessing in the blockchain space. It's a battle between the old and the new. The Web2 GAFA and the Web3 giants, Rafael Nadal and Novak Djokovic. Wonder Woman and Catwoman. Well, you get the idea. We are seeing here a clash of the titans. But first, let me introduce myself. So my name is Louis. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Yellow. I'm French and American, living in Ukraine. So Yellow is a web-free company employing proudly 120 amazing geeks. I grew up along the side of the internet. Computers are so much part of who I am that when I was born, the, doc the doctors heard the sound. Well, seriously, my father is a distinguished engineer, and when I was born, he was uh, wor uh, working with the creator of the C language, Denis Ritchie, at Unix Laboratory. When I was six, he showed me how TCP IP worked. At 10, I got my own computer. At 12, I started using Linux and building websites. Passionate about what's under the hood, I'm an early contributor of open source, cloud computing, and big data projects. Like me, the internet has come a long way. It became, be, began with internet connection and revolutionized the way we are sharing information. So let's see a bit. So with Web1, it was great for getting ideas out into the world, but not much else. Web 2, the internet truly became a shared space and GAFA was born. They have secured the mainstream market and so they already did cross the chasm on Web 2. And so they are pretty well established on their market. So while Web 3 is an obvious technology leap forward, we remain innovator or early adopter stages. There's only one way crypto can go mainstream. And this is by bringing those Web2 companies to adopt the innovation here. So as an example, let's compare this to the car industry. It all began with the invention of the wheel, the internet. Growing to the point that um, now we have some pretty cool electric cars. And what we need is rockets, something that will take us to the moon. So while they are sitting on a massive pile of cash, the GAFA are in no rush to transform their cool electric cars into rockets. To some observers, it feels like the Web2 giant don't want to fight the Web3 titans. It's like a generation clash. So, why GAFA isn't taking the leap forward Web3? Well, first of all, blockchains are not horizontally scalable. In IT, horizontally scalable means you add more servers, you get more power. And blockchains are not scalable by design due to the consensus algorithm. And this is not going to change. And so we are far from the internet scale. To give you an idea, the internet is currently roughly 500 million servers, while crypto is no more than 50,000 servers. So that's a big difference. Second, what chain would they even use? If we consider Ethereum, that won't even handle the scale of internet. Solana has to improve its stability, and it might not even be bulletproof. Making their own private chain won't work either. Facebook has tried. So, you know, GAFA can't really afford to bet on the wrong technology here. So GAFA, Google, Apple, Facebook, right? For those who don't know. So, and there is the crossing the chasm problem, the last problem. And as we said, currently in crypto, the world is made of early adopters, while GAFA has secured the mainstream market 
and won't be really taking any risk. So as an example, Facebook, whose audience has aged, crossing the chasm would mean a lot of resistance from their user. And I think you already seen this happening. So layer one, layer two are two sides of the same coin. They are important, but not as good for mainstream adoption. To become the ultimate solution, the magic red pill, we need something binding all blockchain and existing application. And that is where the layer three comes to the rescue. So let's speak about layer three. So what is the layer three? Layer three is a middleware or a network between blockchains and existing web application. And this is at the core of the layer three, we have a technology called state channel. So now I'll, I'll explain a bit more about state channel. So first of all, state channel have superpowers. Number one, it's ultra fast. It's massively scalable. It's truly horizontal scalable. You, you remember, add more server, get more power. Number two, it's blockchain agnostic. And so that makes them natively cross-chain. And number three, this is already Web2 compatible. And so you can already supercharge the existing infrastructure without having to rewrite everything using smart contract. So state channel can act as a middleware between blockchain and legacy information system like banks. So the web we know today has cost billions to build and rewriting everything is not really an option. And this is where state channel can really change the picture and makes the adoption much faster. And so you can reuse the existing web infrastructure having blockchain feature and infrastructure and not the other way around, which is very important. So finally, about state channel. This is cost efficient, secure, scalable, and fast. What else do you need more? So with this layer three, Web2 companies can finally take the leap forward. There are billions of websites, millions of servers composing the internet. And state channel is really a pragmatic way to its evolution. State channel technology is providing a low effort, low cost solution to address these challenges we are facing today. I think we need to recenter our focus on f solving this dilemma, settling the battle between the big tech and, and settle the clash. So because the big tech firms are never going to let the web free happen without them. They're not going to let go the mainstream market go. And keep in mind, rewriting them everything on chain is clearly not the easiest way for mainstream adoption. So finally, at Yellow, we are building a financial infrastructure. And because high frequency trading is so resource intensive, is that we had to build our network on layer three. We are presenting the technology to our stand over there. And if you want to learn more, come by. So I would like to give some special thanks to Consensus, Mesh, and uh, Magmo teams, which have been uh, really helping us uh, on the, the State Channel project. So you can check out the website of State Channel on statechannel.org and the GitHub, github.com slash state channel. I really recommend you. We are about to release the second version of the SDK, and I think you could uh, check it out. So you're probably wondering what's, what's up with the yellow suitcase here. And so, well, it's very special. It has superpower as well. It does represent all of the hardships my team overcame to come here today those guys. I would like to thank them for, for being here. 
So the story is that this suitcase has been through war zone, traveling the world. First, we expected to attend the AIBC Dubai, but then the war broke up, broke out in Ukraine, and so the suitcase was still in Kharkov, all the way there. And uh, so the journey continued. I picked up the suitcase in Kiev. Finally, I was bringing the suitcase to Moldova, aiming to cross the border because my plane was going through there. But it got detained by the custom because there was too many things in there. So we sent it back to Anastasia, which during the curfew had to smuggle it through the Polish border on a bus that we had to take the suitcase all of the way to Brussels, where Steve here flew in the suitcase to Paris, and then Damien picked it up, and finally, it's here in Toronto. So it's, it's a bit of a witness of an interesting journey we had. In this suitcase, you will find ducks. They are representing an airdrop that we are launching today. And so feel free to join us, come at the booth, or um, meet some of us around the space, and uh, pick up some of the duckies, and uh, participate, and come to meet us at the yellow booth over there. Thank you all. And once again, I would like to thank all of my team for making this possible.